I grew up in the woods. I understand many things because of the woods. Mysterious to the everyday, plants create folklore.
The forest was a place of fear and fascination because it represented the unknown. The other world was somewhere different, but it could also be right next to you. And the forest, with its darkness and its shadowy spirits and so forth, was one of the most obvious locations of the other world.
the daylight draws in, we are all as able as each other in recalling occurrences that can best be explained by our having brushed against, however briefly, the beings of the other world. And we're all aware that as the day is meant for humankind, the night belongs to them. So if we travel back beyond the beginning of the power lines, to the world lighted by moon and stars, by candle and turf fire, how far must we go to trace the roots of the beliefs that we are so reluctant to reject entirely? I am not sleeping. I never sleep. I'll tell you why, what I've discovered in these long, endless hours that I've spent here. There's something strange about this place. The cold sears me all through again, penetrating to my very marrow. You hear the wind? It's beginning again. About midnight every night it springs up. This wind that lives in this world of purple shadows.
lonely marshes and bogs that span much of northern Europe 2,000 years ago were regarded as holy sites by the Druids, portals into the other world, the spirit world. It looks as if all England is on fire tonight. The trees stand black against the glowing sky, and the harvest moon hangs hot over the hedgerows.
The passage of night and the rising of the sun, the returning of the seasons, the renewal of growth, all matters of wonder, all occasions to placate or celebrate the spirits of the earth. Thank <laughs> you.